Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be learning about the Intermediate Value Theorem. Before we dive into the math, let's look at some of the big ideas of this theorem from a real-world perspective. Suppose we have a roller coaster. In order for the train to get from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill, it must pass through all of the intermediate heights. The train doesn't just magically start at the bottom and instantly appear at the top. No, it has to travel through all of the intermediate heights. And in order to do this, the track must be continuous. On a discontinuous track, the coaster would not be able to pass through all of the intermediate heights. And also, that would be a very dangerous ride. So this brings us to the intermediate value theorem, which says, if a function f of x is continuous on a closed interval a to b, and d is a number that lies between f of a and f of b, then there's a number x equals c in the open interval a to b for which f of c equals d. Note that the boxed part here is called the conclusion of the intermediate value theorem. Now you may be wondering, how does this relate to the roller coaster analogy? Well, let's look at a diagram to understand how this theorem works. Here we have a function f of x, which is continuous on the closed interval a to b. And on the y-axis, we have d, which is a number that lies between f of a and f of b. What the intermediate value theorem says is that there's a number x equals c in the open interval a to b for which f of c equals d. In other words, if we have a continuous function, then it must pass through all of the intermediate heights between f of a and f of b, just like the roller coaster train. And the intermediate value theorem guarantees that there's an x value, x equals c, such that f of c equals d. Something to note here is that the intermediate value theorem is an existence theorem it proves the existence of a value without actually finding what that value is. In other words, it proves the existence of a value x equals c without finding the value. Let's take a look at some typical calculus examples to see how we can apply the intermediate value theorem. Here's a classic example. Determine if f of x has a root on the interval 1, 2. Now here, we're not looking to actually find the root, we're just determining if one exists within that interval. Also, note that the problem doesn't explicitly say to use the intermediate value theorem, but after gaining some practice, you'll start to recognize problems like this that require you to use this theorem. So let's trace through the sections of the intermediate value theorem and see how it applies to this problem. So here we have the graph of f of x, and the first part of the theorem says, if a function f is continuous on a closed interval a to b. Well, we can see from the graph that f of x is continuous. Also, note that f of x is a polynomial, and polynomials are always continuous. Moving on to the next part of the theorem, and d is a number that lies between f of a and f of b. So now let's figure out what a and b are. a is the left endpoint, 1, and b is the right endpoint, 2 f of 1 equals negative 1, and f of 2 equals 3. Now we have to figure out what d is. Well, since we're determining if f of x has a root on the given interval, and roots are located on the x-axis, that means we need to see, does the function pass through a height of 0? That means d equals 0. Now we can see that f of a is negative, and f of b is positive. Well, since the function is continuous, it has to pass through all of the intermediate heights between negative one and three. Therefore, it must reach a height of zero at some x value, which we're gonna call x equals c. And that means a root must exist on this interval. So now we can write a justification statement to finish the problem. Since f of x is continuous on the closed interval one to two, and f of one is less than zero, and f of two is greater than zero, there must be a value x equals c on the open interval one to two, such that f of c equals zero due to the intermediate value theorem. So f of x must have a root on the interval one to two. Okay, let's look at another example. Suppose f of x is continuous and selected values are shown in the table. Determine if f of x reaches a height of three on the interval zero, two. To make this determination, let's trace through the sections of the intermediate value theorem and see how they relate to this problem. The first part states, if a function f is continuous on the closed interval a to b, 
While the problem states that f is continuous and we're given a closed interval, zero to two, so we're good there. Going on to the next section, and d is a number that lies between f of a and f of b. Well, we know that a equals zero and b equals two, and f of zero equals negative two, and f of two equals one. And we're looking to see, does the function reach a height of three? So d equals three. But here's the thing, f of zero is less than three, and f of two is also less than three. So d equals three does not lie between f of zero and f of two. Therefore, we cannot use the intermediate value theorem to conclude that f of x reaches a height of three on the interval zero, two. It's possible that it does, but we just don't have enough information in the problem to make that conclusion using the intermediate value theorem. f of x could be a function like this. As you see, it passes through all the points given in the table, but it doesn't reach a height of three on the interval zero, two. Alternatively, f of x could be something like this. Again, it passes through all the points given in the table, but this time it does reach a height of three. The main point is, if d does not lie between f of a and f of b, then the intermediate value theorem cannot guarantee that the function will reach the specific height in question. But let's suppose that the original problem was changed and f of two equals five. In this case, we do have enough information to use the intermediate value theorem. Since f of zero is less than three and f of two is greater than three, therefore we can conclude that f of x reaches a height of three on the interval zero two due to the intermediate value theorem. Here's a possible graph of f of x in this new scenario. As you can see, f of x passes through all the given points and it also reaches a height of three on the given interval. So in summary, if you're faced with a particular calculus problem that asks you to determine if a function reaches a particular height on a given interval, then this is a clue that you need to consider the intermediate value theorem. To help you memorize this theorem, I encourage you to listen to my intermediate value theorem song. This will help you get the big ideas of this theorem into your mind through music. And that's absolutely how you will rock calculus. Yeah.